Hi guys, and welcome to a beginner's guide to Vortex part one. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install Vortex and use it to manage one of your games. Now, I am going to assume that you have watched the introduction video to this series, or you at least know what Vortex is. However, I'm going to reiterate something I did state there, the fact that this series is aimed at beginners, people who have not modded their games before. If you are a veteran or just generally quite a tech savvy person, you may find this video a little slow. I do apologize for that. However, I will put timestamps down in the description if you want to skip ahead to a particular section. Having said that, let's crack on and install Vortex. The first step is, unsurprisingly enough, download the installation file. But at the time of making this video, it's in alpha state and is only available via its own mod page. I will leave a link down below. And to get it, you go to that page, go along to files, and just click on the manual download button. However, by the time you watch this video, it may have been fully released, and if so, you should download it from the top of any Nexus Mods page. There should be a button clearly marked Install Vortex. If you click there, it will take you to the download page. And I'm going to download mine to my desktop. Once downloaded, simply double click on the application you just downloaded and don't worry if you get prompted by your virus checker or the Windows security. As long as you've downloaded this from Nexus, it is perfectly safe. Click yes and it will begin to install. And that's it. The download and installation process is done. It will automatically open up Vortex for you to look at, and it will add an icon, a shortcut onto your desktop so that you can run the program from there. Now, you can use Vortex to manage mods that you have downloaded from places other than Nexus, but this application does integrate really well with the Nexus site. So the first thing I recommend you do is log in or register there. It's actually a good idea to open up your default browser and make sure that you're currently logged in to Nexus mods before you log in using Vortex. You can then log in with Vortex either via the prompt that will almost certainly be at the top asking you to log in or register or the red login icon at the top. And if you are logged in on your default browser, just click login on website. It will open up another tab in your browser, click authorize and you're done. You're now logged into Nexus via Vortex. Before we move on, let's have a quick look at the dashboard. It's made up of panels that will allow you to skip straight to important features. For example, this panel will give you a collection of suggested tasks. This one will show you your recently managed game and any tools that you were using. You also have a panel for the latest news. You can actually move these panels around and set things up exactly as you would like them. I'm going to let you play around and discover this for yourself and find a setup that works for you. I realize you probably want to run off and start modding your game about now, but I would just like to draw your attention to something in settings. Under the Vortex tab, there is something called multi-user mode that is set to per user by default. What this means is all of the mods, profiles, and settings that you use on this tool will only apply to you. If you log out and somebody else logs into this machine and starts using the tool, they will have their own settings. If this is not how you would like it to behave, you can change it to shared. This would mean if you have a friend who logs onto your machine and starts up Vortex, he will have the same mods installed as you do. You will need to restart to activate this change. If you would like some more details about this particular mode, you can click on the information icon that is next to the title and read the text that pops up. These icons will appear on various features in Vortex and will give you some very useful tips. So let's actually do something useful and choose a game to manage. Now you can either go to the game section and start the management process that way, or if you have this prompt, just click on it, select a game to manage, and it will take you there automatically. 
as you can see, I currently have no games managed, but it is saying it's discovered four games that it could manage and 24 games that it currently supports. If you don't think the game that you have and want to manage is on this list, you can actually click search for games and it will start the process of trying to find new ones. If you would like to hide some of these games, so for example, perhaps you have Fallout New Vegas, but you have it managed with another tool, same with Skyrim, you can hide those games and neaten this up. Don't worry if you do that, you can always click show hidden games and see them once more, and then you can manually select show on any games you want to reappear. I am going to use Vortex to manage Skyrim Special Edition, so I'm just going to hover over and select the Manage option. Do not worry if you get a little warning telling you that mods can't be deployed. This is probably because you have your games installed on a different drive to where the program files go by default, and you're managing a game such as Skyrim Special Edition. If I click More, it will give me the full details. Basically, Skyrim Special Edition is going to need a hard link deployment, don't worry too much about that right now, and that will only work if the mods are installed on the same drive as the game. This is not a problem, we can fix this. I'm going to click here on Fix. This will take you to Settings and the Mods tab. Don't worry, you can come back here later manually if you want to change something. Currently, the base path for the game is pointing at users Gopher App Data Roaming Vortex Skyrim SE. I'm going to need to place this somewhere else. To fix this, I'm going to simply click here on this browse icon, and I'm going to go along to the drive where my games are installed, and that happens to be on F. Now, the game in question is installed in the Steam folder, but I'm going to install my mods in a completely different folder, I'm going to put it under Games, I'm going to create a new folder called Vortex. I'm going to go in there and I'm going to create a new folder called Skyrim SE. And that is the folder I'm going to use. Now, you don't actually have to name the folder if you don't want to, you don't even have to create it. You could replace the name of the game with curly brackets, game, close curly brackets, and it will actually figure it out for you, as you can see. It's completely up to you which method you want to use. Obviously, this is not really going to save you any time unless you happen to know the path to the uh, folder in question and can type it quickly. However, it is good information to know. Once you have the path set, the apply button should appear, click that, and you will be done. The deployment method should now have changed to something like hard link deployment in this case, and I am now ready to manage the game in question. I'm actually done. And that is it for this video. You now have Vortex installed and you have it managing one of your games. You are now ready to modify that game. So of course, that is what we're going to cover in the next video. I'm going to be showing you how to install some simple mods. I hope you can join me for that video and I look forward to seeing you there. And until then, remember, as always, have fun.